Today's class, I may have to, I started getting convicted because I felt like I rushed it. Um, but this class is very, very, uh, as Quincy Jones would say, this is very heavy, baby. This is very heavy. Um, but just while y'all got those calendars out there, uh, by the pagan system, today is the 10th day of August. They call it the, their eighth month. By the most high system, today is the what, fifth day of our eighth moon. So according to the most high's ways, our uh, true day of covenant is going to fall on pagan um, Tuesdays. Pagan Tuesdays is going to be the true set apart day of covenant. And no, you know, I can't, I can't take off work. You know, I, if, if I had enough time, I'd lose my time. But we're in captivity. We're, we're, we're in captivity, and the Most High knows these things. So don't let anyone guilt trip you and like you're fake, you're phony because you're working on on the Sabbath day. Because those same people accusing you of being fake and phony won't put one dollar on your cash app when your bills get That's lights right. get cut off. That's right. When Repo Man come get your car, then I'm praying for you, brother. But you until you told me don't not to work on Sabbath because I'm fake. So when I'm, I'm not interested in these super brews and, and they put their holiness on you, you set that day apart the best you can. If all you got is a 15 minute break where you go in your car and, and thank the most side, that's what you do. He knows your heart is with him. He knows where we're at. We're worshiping him the best we can in this concept we have. Uh, if you have the means to, your health is, is allows you to, we do still fast on the uh, sixth day of the month. And I don't always announce it because my biggest fear, my biggest fear as a, as a leader is to become churchy and to become a cult. So I'm constantly fasting for me and my house. And if you don't need to fast or if you don't, you know, that's totally up to you. But we always fast on the sixth day of our calendar just to keep us in rhythm with the Most High. So this month, uh, Pagan Monday will be our fast day. Uh, if your health allows you to, please consecrate 12 hours of liquid, and that liquid could be coffee. If you're new, use soda, juices, whatever, till you get strong enough to where you can get to water, and then maybe you do six hours dry, six hours of water. That's how you build your stamina up. So, Pagan Monday is going to be doing 12 hours of uh, fasting, and... I love when we get together because I'm never sure... I'm never, I'm never confident that the Most High is always talking to me. I'm never really confident. I'm still, I'm still learning and growing like y'all. So today's class, I got confirmation when Elder played that song. And that song has simple lyrics, but it was powerful. He says, if you want to get closer, you got to get lower. I don't know if y'all caught those lyrics. I was like, man, if you want to get closer to the most high, you have to get lower. You have to humble yourself. And when I heard him play that, my soul sort of bubbled. Like, that's confirmation. What the most high gave me this week was him and not me. I don't never want to give you what I want to teach. I want you to have what the most high has for you, even if it's just one person. So today's class is right on time with what Elder was talking about. Well, that song Elder played, if you want to get closer, you have to get lower. And I got some handouts. I may have not made enough for everyone. So lock in, you know, we, we vacillate with people inside the building. So if you don't get a copy, I will make more copies for next week. I apologize for that. Those who were at Saka and I didn't have the printouts for the glyphs for the feast, those on the table, Nariah wanted those as, as visual aids. So the three feasts in Hebrew on the table. And um, today's class is, is one of the, in my opinion, today's class is going to be one of the most important classes of our, um, of our resurrection and of our exodus. Today's class is going to be one of the most important classes because everybody wants, well, let me start like this. The most coveted thing on this planet, the most covetous thing on this planet is not silver and gold. Silver and gold is little trinkets. The most covetous thing on this planet is the power of Yah. Everybody wants the power of Yah. Everybody wants to harness the power of Yah. Everyone wants, to, wants you to believe, they want to demonstrate they have the power of Yah in their lives. 
and that's why we open up with Isaiah 40 and, and 31, was it 29? He says, he gives power to the faint. Then I play that song, if you want to get closer, get lower. He's giving power to the humble, to the meek. Everyone wants the power of God and wants to show, God's in my life, I've been walking with Jesus, and I, I, I didn't heal people. And it's all vanity. It's the vanity of men who wants to want you to see the power of God in their lives. You don't have to uh, put on, you don't have to demonstrate anything. Just walk this covenant out, and the power of God is going to demonstrate in your lives. And everyone, everyone is looking for that home run. Everyone is looking for that home run. They want, they want to heal. They want to put their hands on somebody and see cancer just flow up out the air. They, they want someone to come in the, in the building with a wheelchair and they come up here and they pray for you. And in the name of Jesus, it's vanity. It's vanity. The power of God has been showing up for us, but you take it for granted because you don't know how powerful that, that, that power was. My wife's testimony this, this week at prayer, it was the power of Yah. This woman who we now know, all praise to the Most High, you are inferior to me, not being braggadocious, this is what the script is saying. I know you are inferior to me, and you buck up, and you, not, you don't know what's on my person or what's on my, in my car, and had she not been humble and had the power of Yah on her, she could have, like that show, snapped and lost her freedom, but that was the power of Yah saying, sis, laugh it off. She's a dead woman walking. The power of Yah has been showing up. We've been taking it for granted. We've been taking it for granted. When we break down and strangers come to help us, big men, big, big brown skinned men, we got people running to help us. That's the power of Yah showing up. When you've been sick, and the sickness took this person down, and you still are trying. Mm -hmm. That's the power of Yah. But we're taking it for granted because it's not that that old uh, Benny Hinn. <laughs> so we're taking it for granted. When every one of your job is getting laid off, and you just like, your performance wasn't that great, but why are you still here? Why are you jelly? <laughs> it's just the power of Yah on my life. Don't, don't be mad because well, your numbers weren't that good last week. I got Yah. This is when we show up. Why, why they kept you? I'm a tour keeper. I've been trying to tell you something that poor. The power of Yah has been showing up, but because it's not in the it's not in the form we wanted, we take it for granted. We take it for granted. We want to walk on water like Peter and show, see, man, you see him walk on water? That's a man of God. The most high's power been showing up when someone cuts you and you keep your mouth closed. That's the power of Yah showing up. We just take it for granted. We've been, we still have church in us, and it, it's bittersweet. Chef been, Chef been sharing them, and then another one of our brothers who, uh, my Facebook friend, he be sharing these church and these church shenanigan videos, and they're hilarious. But then, then I feel sorry for him because, like, y'all really think that's a demonstration of God on y'all. It's demons on y'all. All that shouting and shaking, this one video, I don't know if Chef shared it or someone else, this woman's in front of the church. Where are my happy days? Uh, not happy days, what's happening crowd at? Anybody want to show what's happening? This woman in front of the church doing the rerun. She's doing the funky chicken. I'm like, and I'm looking at the elders like, y'all ain't going to get this in order? You mean to tell me that's the spirit of God? That's the Holy Ghost on her? So that means Rerun had the Holy Ghost all them shows. We watched him do that. Everybody wants this power to demonstrate God's in their lives, and it, it's, it's vanity. It's vanity. So today's class is power from on high. Because power from on high, we're going to need it. We're going to see some days. If you read Jeremiah, you read Daniel, we're going to see some days. I know the slave ships was bad, the movies they show us, Coons and all that stuff, have me crying. But the prophecies say we're going to see some days unlike since there were nations. So you think of the worst slave movie you've seen, Amistad. Um, what's the most recent one? Um, what's the most recent slave movie that was kind of really... 12 Years of Slave. 12 Years of Slave. Um, 
Emancipation was good. Yeah. You think of the, the worst slave movie you've seen, we got days coming worse than that. Seeing babies ripped from their mother's arms, seeing sisters raped in front of their husbands. The prophecy says it's going to be days unlike since they were nations. So you're going to need the power of Yah from on high, but it's not coming in the form of Hikam on Honda, he's coming on a Honda. All that stuff's going to fail. So today, with the help of Yah, I want to go through some scriptures to help people see what we've been learning in them churches is just lights, camera, action, and show. And it's sad because those videos crack me up. Some videos, the pastor throwing pillows across the church. You mean the Holy Ghost got you throwing pillows across the church? And these people think that's God in them, but it's Satan. It's Satan. So with the help of Yah, we got a few scriptures. The first thing I want to demonstrate with the help of Yah is everybody who actually had the power of Yah show up and manifest in their lives inside the scriptures, none of them was shaking, gyrating. None of them was doing all that foaming at the mouth. They were living their lives, and I was seeing them from on high, and I gave them the power to do a great, to do a great feat for the nation. You don't have to be putting on arrows and, and changing your voice. And, yes, son, come up here, son. Yes, I see you. Oh, like, change your voice for brother. Just talk to me. No, don't think you don't got feminine energy. Just talk to me. They all this extra stuff. I seen this one video. I, I don't know again. I don't know if Chef shared it. These these students were becoming ordained now. As I guess as pastors. They had these men, I think it was one female, lay down on the floor, and the ones ordaining them come and lay over them. You gonna let a grown man lay on your back? Where's this in the scriptures at? All this mess is Christianity, is Christian dogma, is garbage. It's garbage. So don't think it's gonna take long. Let's get a few examples on how the power of Yah shows up. The church gives you 1,000 steps to receive the power of Yah. And none of these steps are inside the Bible. 1,000 steps to, to, to get Yah to move for you, and none of their steps are inside the Bible. So we're going to read some, some examples in the Bible why and how the Most High shows up. Power from on high. The first one, let's go to Barashat 32. Genesis 32. Barashat is in the beginning. In the beginning, Barashat with Genesis 32. It don't take all of that to get the most high to move. You don't, all that crying and snotting. There is one video I seen, and y'all, most y'all familiar with, or familiar with this, because this is a Hebrew community. The sister wanted to go into her shout, and you see her, she wants to get into the shout, but she couldn't because the music wasn't playing. But she kept wanting to go into her shout. But she couldn't get into it because the music wasn't playing. And guess what happened? Soon that A flat come, that she full of. So, so is it is it is it that is it the spirit or is it the music? Is it the spirit or is it the music? These things are not part of our culture. The Most High don't demand that from you. You want power from on high. Keep the commandments. Let's get these examples and run through this. Genesis thirty two twenty four. Shaman, read. Genesis chapter 32 and verse 24. And Yaquab was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Uh -huh. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Yaquab's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Okay. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except you bless me. So the angel is telling all of us. Uh, Sunday school superstars, we know that this is our father Jacob, Yaquab, is wrestling with, it wasn't a man, he's wrestling with an angel, Malachiam, but he's in the form of a man. So Jacob is wrestling with this Malachiam, this angel who made himself in the form of a man, and Jacob was so strong and tenacious, he couldn't, the, the angel couldn't overtake Jacob, so he was like, man, this, 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 this brother strong, he had to touch Jacob's hip. He put Jacob's hip out of joint. And Jacob and the an angel says, "Let me go. The day breaketh. The, the day is about to start. I got to go back and present myself to the Most High." So the, the, Jacob says, "I ain't gonna let you go till you bless me." 
We, we all together. Read on. Right. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Yaquab. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Yaquab, but Yasharal. For as a prince has thy power with Allahim and with men, and has prevailed. As a prince thou has what? Power with the Most High. As a prince thou has what? Power. I don't want to turn this into an identity class, but y'all know what I say. Every Our covenant is intertwined. Our forefather, his name was Jaquab in Hebrew. And because he was so tenacious and he, he, he wouldn't let that angel go, the angel, by orders of the Most High, says, your name is not Jaquab no more. Your name is Yashar Allah. And then he gives the definition. For as a prince, you have power. We already have power of Yah because we're Yashar Allah. What people are going to school for, laying out, tearing and spitting and foaming at the mouth, we were born with it because we're Yashar Allah. We come from the seed of Yaquab, who had his name changed to Yashar Allah. Yashar Allah means the prince of the power. All right, let's keep man. That's a praise break. If we were Christians, we'd be dancing right now. What they're begging for, what they're foaming at the mouth, playing the organ for, we have naturally. We have the power naturally. We don't have to fake nothing. All we got to do is speak to Abba. Abba, help me today. Help me stay in line today. Help me to be nice today. Help me to be kind today. And power from on high is going to come on you. So I don't want to turn this into identity, but you can't get away from our identity. We have power from on high in us. We don't have to put on no errors and no big old fringes and speak. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'm at the basketball court. I want to talk about no scriptures. Bro, I'm balling right now. I'm shooting pool. Can I shoot pool? We don't have to put on no extra to be holy people. Just keep this covenant and your, the power of God will be manifested in your life. When these Christians are running around, all these answers around the church, you're doing 15 laps. But this is the high hurdles? <laughs> they should have used you in France when you're running around this church. They think that's God. That's the Satan in you. Powerful on high comes to the lawful, and it's naturally in us because we're Yashar Allah. We don't have to put on no airs. Did you finish it up, Bob? And Jacob, or your father, asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. Well, well we finish that up. For a witness to this, we can get Hosea 12 and 3. For those who don't know, that, that name Israel is a pagan uh, moniker. Israel means nothing. Israel is a pagan word. It means nothing. Yashar Allah means the princes of Yah. The princes, and his name is Yashar Allah because he's the power of the princes. Oh my goodness. He's Yashar Allah because he's the power of the princes, and we're Yashar Allah because we're the prince of the power. Oh my goodness. Somebody say amen in here. Come on. Amen. Come on Hosea 12 and 3. Am I right? <laughs> Talk back to me. <laughs> Are y'all there? Are y'all there? Yes. Y'all miss y'all a lot. This we got more mics out there. It's just quick because I don't want to get wrong. Nah, this is class. I don't see a problem. The system saying the prince of the power of Jacob. And then uh, I forgot where it's from, but when they even... Um, use the same verbiage when they talk about Hasatan and call him like the prince of the power of the air or something like that. Yeah, he's the, he's the, he's the prince of the air. Yeah, it, when, it, when that, even with this, that verse would have been so similar to like this. So before Satan fell, he had, he had that position. So they're still referring to him as that in the scriptures, even though he lost that position. He was the prince of the air. And just so we hear, because we're here now, the word prince in the Hebrew is Shar. That's why Sarah, Sarai had her name changed to Sharah because she gave life to the princess. So that ah, the ah sound at the end of Sharah's name, the ah represents life. She gave life to the princess. So that's what they try to say, your spiritual Israel. No, Sharah gave actually birth to the princess. Sharah, she gave life to the princess. That's why this language is important. The culture is important. The culture is important. Hosea 12 and 3. 
Hosea chapter 12 and verse 3. He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with Yahweh. By his strength he had what? Power. That's the definition of Yashar Allah again. That's just a confirmation. Israel is a dead language. Israel is a dead word. That's why I really don't get offended anymore when they call those people Israelis. Yeah, you're Israeli, you're dead. But Yashar Allah is us. We, we're Yashar Allah, we're the nation, we're the people of Yah, we're the princes of Yah. Any comments or questions about that? So, that takeaway from, from that first witness, power from Yah is naturally inherently in his people. The power of Yah is naturally inherent in his people. We just been dormant because we've been living by the Gentile covenant. The power of Yah's been dormant in your life because you've been having Christmas, because you've been eating Easter egg and Easter hams. So the power that you were supposed to have naturally has been dormant. But guess what? The Most High has returned to his people and lions are waking up. Lions are waking up. Now we got the government moving, trying to make new laws because the lion, I don't care what law you pass, you can't stop Yah. That's right. You can't stop Yah. That's right. You can pass all kind of bills you want, all kind of, Yah is with his people again. Yes. You can't stop this. Let's get another witness and wash them off is Exodus. Wash them off is Exodus and, the, and these are the names. Exodus 31. Just showing that all this outward uh, show of expression, trying to show you got the power, is, is vanity, is, 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 is the doctrine of men. You don't have to put on to see the most highest power in your life. Exodus 31, and we're just going to read verses 1 through 3. Read. Exodus chapter 31 and 1. And Yahweh spake unto Mashah, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Ur, of the tribe of Yahweh, and I have filled him with the spirit of Yahweh. I have filled him with what? The spirit of Yahweh. I have filled him with what? The spirit of of Yahweh. If you don't mind marking your text, underline that verse. I have filled him with the spirit of Yahweh. Because Christian dogma, I'm getting ahead of myself, but let's let this flow. Christian dogma teaches that the spirit of God or the Holy Spirit was only released after Messiah resurrected. And that's why Messiah came to give us the Holy Spirit. No, you can't find one verse to say Messiah came to give us the Holy Spirit. Yashar Allah, we're born with the Spirit. That's right. If you go back to Genesis, I won't take all there for the sake of time, but if you go back to Genesis, Bible shot 2 and 3, I think, 2 and 7, he said that he breathed into Adam, and Adam became a living soul. That word breathe is the Rawak, the Spirit. So we're, we're born with his Spirit. So this Christian dogma that you got, Christ came to give us the Spirit, no, Christ came to renew the covenant with the people. This Christian dogma has to stop. You can't give me two verses that show Christ came to give us the Holy Ghost. Right in Exodus, and, and let's make this thing real. This is a group, a generation come out of Exodus, and for years they have been following the ways of Egypt. They have been idol worshiping. They have been fornicating. Even in the wilderness, it says they were fornicating in the wilderness. But Abba seemed fit to overlook their shortcomings, Pasak. He Pasak, he covered their gaps, and he put the spirit, his spirit, into these brothers. Did y'all see that? The Holy Spirit, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's let this flow. The Roman Catholic Church, a.k.a. Christians, have been, I saw you the ride, I didn't forget you out. The Roman Catholic Church, a.k.a. Christians, have invented this third entity called the Holy Spirit. And that's part of their trinity. But there is no the Holy Spirit, it's only the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the most high. So when this verse says, and he put the spirit of God in him, this is the most high pouring himself into this man, giving him the wisdom and knowledge how to make these things for him. Any comments or questions about that? Did you finish that up, Bob? He says, and I have filled with the, him the spirit of Yahweh in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. So everything he's about to ask you to do, I'm not going to give you something to do and not give you the tools to do it. 
What's, what father in his right mind going to tell his son, son, go out there and cut my yard for me? You ain't taught him how to fill the lawnmower up. You ain't taught him how to pull the string. So Abba is about to give him instructions, and before you ask how to do it, poof, here go my spirit, some of my spirit. Now you got knowledge and wisdom how to do everything I'm, I'm asking you to do. Now, Rod? Uh, the Most High is moving so much, I can't even tell you how many witnesses that he's given, but just for the sake of, I don't want to take up too much time, because the word of rock was on my mind heart this morning, all day really, mm -hmm. even when I was talking with Sister Joyce a little while ago. Can we can we go over that word again? Because I know we've done it before. I don't have any glyphs, I don't think made. I don't have my hard drive with the uh, with the uh, Shirasha on there. But the Hebrew word rawak is made up of um, three three glyphs, three uh hieroglyphs. The head of a man is the rock sound you hear. The wah sound, the, the wah sound you hear is the the tent, the tent peg, and then the ka sound is the hand, the hand of a man, the palm of a man. So rawak, the rawak. Who's our head? The Most High. And then the tent peg is joining. The yah is joining to the hand, or yah is joining to those covered. Who's in the palm of his hands? Children of Israel. So I'm looking at the word. Is the child? Is the tenth peg? That's even better. The, 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 yeah. That's even better. So, uh, is it is it fair to say when it says the spirit of God is it Rawat Allah? Yeah, our word for the, the word we would use is Allah. So Allah Rawat Rawat Allah. Because I'm I I've just been breaking the word down. Uh, and I'm just going to say my thoughts what I've been thinking. When, especially when you read this verse, well, a the, lot, the, the mind that's been sealed from eternity. Well, why? So, just like what you're saying, the most high sin, the rawak, because when we say spirit, you know, that it can get, you get that whole Christian notion. Right. But when you understand rawak, the mindset of the most high the understanding from the most high, the that power that he sends from eternity and he'll seal it to his people by the covenant when we keep the commandments. It's I don't know man, that's I've really been looking at that word and it's it's still not all the way there, but if y'all come up with something, if something hits y'all hard too, just just bring it. I just want to say that. It's it's just that exercise we've been doing here over the years is going to come up at the end of this class. So how, learning how to process these glyphs is not a waste of time. The reason why they think all that shouting and that, or that break dance, and the reason why they think that, I'm getting ahead of myself. The reason why they think that's the power of God is because they, they're reading the, the Bible from a Greco-Roman text. They're not understanding the Hebraic culture. They're not understanding. So how we're trying to process these glyphs, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring forth fruit. And we're going to see it at the end of this class. So that's not for nothing. It's not for nothing. So the takeaway of Exodus 31 verses 1 through 3, the text says the Spirit of God came on the brother and gave him knowledge and wisdom on how to make all the things the Most High is asking him to make for the, for the tabernacle. Christian dogma says that we didn't get the Holy Spirit until Christ came in the day of Pentecost is when the Spirit came. No, the spirit of Yah is the spirit that the elders are talking about. And the spirit of Yah has been with his people since the very beginning. Since the very beginning. Any comments or questions about that verse? And as a second witness, the parentheses there, let's go over to uh, Exodus chapter 19 and 10. Exodus, we'll go back to 19 and 10. Exodus 19 and 10. Read. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 10. And Yahweh said unto Mashah, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. Let them wash their clothes. The word for the pagan word baptized is a, is a Roman word, Latin word. Our word to be dipped is to ball. To ball. So 
the only requirement the Most High had for His Spirit to, to, to dwell in this, this brother is to cleanse yourself, sanctify yourself. That's why we baptize, that's why we dip ourselves, because it's a symbolism that we've been washed by the blood. So he had been washed back here, Exodus 19, and because you're washed and sanctified, now I can dwell with you. You see how this church got seven steps to hear from God? No. Keep yourself clean. Keep yourself clean and pure, and the most high, the what's son turn here. That, 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 that man don't mean no good. It's going to be the small, still voices, that's the power of Yah. The, the, these little, um, Oh, my father. These little quacks, Freud, Sigmund Freud, come up with all these little theories, and it's just your subconscious. And it's, you no, know, it's the most high telling you that you're up to no good. You need to go this way. It's the spirit of Yah guiding you. It ain't no woman's intuition. It's your spirit telling you he ain't got no job. He got five babies. It's, your, it's the spirit telling you there ain't no, woman, ain't no woman's intuition. It's the most high talking to you. All you got to do is sanctify yourself, keep your temples pure, and the power of Yah is going to manifest. You don't have to do all this, this fanatic, these shenanigans they do. It's, it's vanity of men. It's vanity of men. Any comments or questions about that? Sanctify yourself, keep yourself pure, and the power of Yah can, can, can dwell with you, can reside in you, and use you, and use you. The next witness, let's go to Bamadabar. Bamadabar is in the wilderness. The pagans call it Numbers. Numbers. Numbers 22 and 28. Just give me all some witnesses. You don't have to put on no airs for the most high and all this. Just keep yourself pure. He's going to, he's going to manifest himself to you when you need him. Numbers 22 and 28. Read. And Yahweh opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? The power of the Most High just went on this donkey. Is this donkey filled with the Spirit, Holy Ghost filled? The Most High will put his Spirit on whoever he chooses. All this stuff they're teaching us in church, you have to do this, you have to come to Bible study 10, 10 weeks in a row, and then you got to go to new members class, and then now you got to go to prophet school. All this stuff is vanity of men. The Most High is going to dwell with you when you need him if you keep yourself pure. Like the brother sung about, if you want to get closer, you have to get lower. Why do you want to heal people? You know how much pressure that is? Because if you found out that this man healed this man, what's going to happen? Everybody's going to want to heal him. And then what happens when you don't heal that one person? Why do you want this? It's vanity of men. It's vanity of men. Um, let's go drop down while we're still here. What's the next precept? Verse 31. Verse 31. Verse 31. Then Yahweh opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the Malach of Yahweh standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. So we got to put this in context. We got to take away all this Christian dogma and put this verse in context. Balaam is a sorcerer. Balaam is what we would call a witch. And he's very profitable. He, a lot of kings has been paying him to, to use sorcery to give them insight. So Balaam was famous and his, 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 his visions were coming true. So he, he wasn't a false prophet, but he was an evil prophet because where is your power coming from? That's why y'all hear me joke about the witchcraft, the forecast. I don't know... What technology y'all get to tell me the next week is going to be raining? Because if, if the Most High is not your source, you are a sorcerer. That's right. So Balaam was Balaam actually was giving people visions, but his source was Satan. Now here's a source. You got, you got to catch this. Here's a wicked sorcerer. The Most High opened up his eyes. The Most High power dwelt on this wicked man. Who? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Okay. Amen. Oh, Amen. This wicked sorcerer had the power of Yah on him, and Yah opened up his eyes to see the, the angel, the Malachim. That's why the donkey won't go. This angel got a sword about to slay you, Balaam. So all this, goodness, all this, these steps the church is giving people, and we got to have church here, do, 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 do. 
the power of Yah just went, just went into this wicked sorcerer. The Most High don't need none of that garbage y'all giving him. Keep your temples pure and his power is going to rest on you. When we need a word where we should go, who got real food, the Most High tell you, don't go to that store, go to this store. And you're like, I don't know, I'll never go over here. They see you on the news that let us have seven dollars in it. That's how the Most High work. It's not just fanatical. It's just, who need a healer? Who need a healer? Oh, somebody in here is going through some marital problems. It's 500 couples in here. <laughs> you real sharp today, Pastor. It's 500 cu couples and somebody's going through some marital problems. If you've been married five years or more, you're going through some twice a week. She ain't iron my clothes. She got the funky today. Okay, okay, okay. He brought my car back. He put, put no gas in. That's how they prophesy. Somebody in here have a marital problem. Somebody in here came looking to hear from God. Ain't that why we go to church? <laughs> I'm going to get out of <laughs> Where we at, out? Did you want to keep going on that, 32? or have No, just the point being, the power, the most high can reside on whoever he wants to, but for, for righteousness, you have to keep your temple clean. Keep your temple clean, and the power of God is going to be in your life, and Y'all might be quiet in here, but this is what we need. This is the dark days coming when you when you open your refrigerator up and all you got is that armor raw baking soda bottle. You're gonna need the power of Yah in your life. You you're either gonna need the power to fast because it ain't nothing you got to fast, or you are gonna need the power of Yah. If somebody showed up, I most high told me stop by your house. Y'all y'all like watermelons? Yes, <laughs> yes, love watermelon. <laughs> My wife don't buy, but she eat that water bottle nothing to eat. Nothing to eat. Let's go to the next one. Let's get y'all out of here. Let's go to 1 Samuel 10. 1 Samuel 10. And the reason why I'm, I'm bringing out all these so-called Old Testament, to show the Christians who may see this, the power, the spirit, the Holy Ghost was in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit is the most high. The Holy Ghost y'all mentioned is the most high. And he was in the Old Testament. Jesus did not bring the Holy Ghost. Jesus did not bring the Holy Spirit to the Israelites. We were born with the Most, Holy, Most High Spirit over us and in us. 1 Samuel 10 and 6. Shema, would you have it? Shema. Read. And the Spirit of Yahweh will come upon thee, and you shall prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man. Again, just another witness for those Christians who went to seminary school and you've been listening to the pastor here, Jesus came to bring us the Holy Ghost so we won't sin no more. Uh, but they were sinning after the most Messiah was resurrected. When Messiah comes back, they still got sin offerings. So why did Messiah come to bring the Holy Ghost so the Holy Ghost will help us not sin if they're sinning when the Messiah comes back? That Christian dogma makes no sense. When you keep asking them critical questions, they're fumbling. They're making up new doctrine on the spot. That's why you got to tell them, give me two or three witnesses. I don't want your little, your little commentary. Give me two or three witnesses that say what you're saying. Christ didn't come to bring the Holy Spirit. Christ came to renew the covenant. Another example in the so-called Old Testament, the Most High is telling Saul, the Holy Spirit, which is the Most High, the Holy Spirit is not this third entity. There is no trinity in Israel. There is no trinity in Yashra'ala. The Israelites have no trinity. We never was polytheistic. We worship one power. His name is Yahweh, the great I am. We never had three in one. We worship the great I am. Hero Israel, Yahweh is one. My first tattoo, I can't remember. I, I, I looked it up before I got it. First Timothy something, there's one God, one faith, one baptism. That's in the New Testament. Your, your champion Paul said there's one faith, one God, and one baptism. But yeah, he's three and one, and that's it. When he's in the flesh, the Bible is saying none of y'all saying. Paul said there's one faith, one God, and one baptism. Well, see, you got to understand, no, find me the text that's saying they're three and one. And then when he was in human, yeah, when he was in human, he became God the Son. But then when he went back to heaven, he became God the Almighty. 
Well, it's but like it's ice and water, and then when ice becomes water, then you get it hot, then it becomes steam, and then that's the spirit. This is the logic. There's one throne. There's one throne in heaven that the Most High sits on. I never read where there's one throne with three seats on it. Your doctrine makes no sense. You're killing people with this Christianity. Amen. There's one faith, one Lord, one baptism. So, again, 1 Samuel 10 and 6, the Spirit's going to come upon him. This Spirit coming upon him is what we learn in the church as the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not this third entity. Entity is the Father. It's the Father. The next verse, drop down. Uh, where we at? Samuel chapter, you want to go to 17 now? Come on. 17, um, chapter 17, verses 45 to 46. 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 46. Try to get y'all out of here, so y'all go watch your Olympics. Oh, uh, so <laughs> I'm missing the break dance. Oh, wow. That was madness. That was madness. I don't even. Don't get me started here. Don't get me started. Don't get me started, Chuck. Come on, man. We invented it, but we don't win. Are you kidding me? We invented it. We didn't get to get it. They hate us because they ain't us. Don't want to be us, but you want to do everything we do. First Samuel 17, verses 45 through 46. This girl was moving like she had a uh, back problem. <laughs> that ain't breaking. <laughs> that ain't breaking. <laughs> that ain't breaking. <laughs> I don't know what she was doing. <laughs> Yeah, I think they got like I think it's Monday is officially over, but I, I only really I, I watch all the other stuff on Twitter because they happen so fast. But the basketball and all that's over with for me. Oh man, First uh, Samuel seventeen verse forty five. Shema. This is a, a Sunday school staple. Forty five to forty six. Read. Then said the wide to the Philistines. Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I have come to thee. Baasham Yahweh Shaitaz, I mean Baasham Yahweh Tazabah, the Allahayim of the armies of Yasha Allah, whom thou hast defiled. This day will Yahweh deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the Arataza, that all the Arataza may know that. There is an Alahayim by Yasharab. There is an Alahayim in Yasharab. There's a power in Yasharab. This is young David. We don't know the true age, but we know he wasn't a man of war because he wasn't out there with his brothers. So in our nation, 20 and up, you got to go to war. So David had to be anywhere from 12 to 17. And his grown behind brothers, bearded up, scared of this giant. And he's coming out there. Who are you? The power of Yah was on little David. Little David couldn't do this in, in his own strength. The power of Yah is on this little boy. He didn't go to school, get no, no five-year degree. This little boy been listening to his dad and granddaddy, and yeah, your most high brought us through over Egypt, and he killed this people for us. David knew the history. Because his father was constantly talking at the table, remember how the most high delivered us. So David grew up hearing the most high's greatness, and now he's out in the front lines delivering food like, who is this clown? The most high power was came to a little boy and delivered this giant to his hands. You don't need no break dance and no seven steps to get y'all to move for you. Just keep your temple clean. Any comments or questions about that one? Next one is Tahalam 51, Psalms 51, a staple. Tahalam 51, Psalms 51. I'm trying to get y'all out of here. This Christianity has fried people's minds. Most I ain't impressed with all that mess you're doing. Psalms 51 and 11, Shema. 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 Read. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Take not what? Thy Holy Spirit from me. Is this the Old Testament? Yes. I thought this Holy Spirit only showed up when Jesus came. The Holy Spirit is the great I am. 
Right. He's been with the lawful. He's been with the righteous throughout our history. Even when we had to go to captivity, as Daniel did, the Most High was still with the righteous. Because Daniel, y'all know the story of the three Hebrew boys, they became Prince of Babylon. So the Most High Spirit, this Holy Ghost, is always with his people, the righteous of his people. Any comments or questions about that? The next one is Ezekiel 2 and 2. Ezekiel 2 and 2. Jesus Christ did not bring the Holy Spirit to earth. The Holy Spirit does not stop you from sinning. If not, why Jamal Bryant got like six kids? Why T.D. Jakes at, at, at Diddy parties? The Holy Spirit ain't, doing, ain't working for y'all. Keep these laws. Ezekiel 2 and 2. Shema. Read. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me. Again, another example. This is the so-called Old Testament. We know there's no such thing as an Old Testament. But here's in Ezekiel, the Spirit. The Spirit is entering him. This Spirit is a power, a form. It's a derivative of the great I Am. The great I Am is omnipotent, omnipresent. So this thing that Jesus ushered in the Holy Ghost is false doctrine, it's Christian dogma. The Romans have created this doctrine, and it's not in the scrolls. The next one, Micah 2.11. Micah 2.11. And this is why the church have no understanding. They don't spend time with the prophets all your, all your theology is coming from John 3.16. That's all y'all know how to quote. John 3.16. That's why you have no understanding. Micah 2, 11. Shema. Read. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of this people. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie. You're walking in the spirit and falsehood. How's that work? How's that work? Again, the spirit of Yah has been with his people forever. You don't have to put on no arrows. You don't have to put on no fancy clothes. Man, when they came to arrest Messiah, the most holiest man, no, the holiest man, to ever walk this filthy earth. When they came to arrest him, they didn't, they couldn't recognize him. Judas had to identify him with a kiss. So that means Messiah didn't have on no fancy clothes. He didn't have on no special gold fringes. He was dressed like the brothers. What you got on don't make you holy. These fringes don't make you holy. These head wraps and meat meters don't make you holy. The spirit in you, the discipline in you is going to set you apart. They came to get Messiah, and Judas had to identify him with a kiss because he looked like his brothers. Y'all get that later. Where we at? Okay, so that was Micah two eleven. The Spirit walking in him and falsehood. So you got this. You you have the Spirit with you, but now you're erring into falsehood. Because is it possible to lose your salvation? Yes. It's possible to lose your salvation. So that means you was walking with the spirit of the most high, but then you fell. That's what this verse is talking about. You was walking with the spirit of Yah, but now you entered falsehood. Church, church, he don't dwell with sinners. True. But if I'm in the covenant and I slip because of the blood of Yahweh shot, I will forgive me. His spirit is still with me. It's constantly, repeatedly, now his spirit leaves. But he gives you that grace. Amen, Mike. Amen. I'm the only sinner in here. I'm the only one mess up sometimes. I'm the only one feel like snapping sometimes. Let's go to so-called New Testament. Yaakon 9, 7. John 7 and 39. Get y'all out of here. I know what y'all want. He was in the lion's den. <laughs> I can't perform. I ain't putting on no errors. We're going to live this covenant. We're going to be real folk. 
you want to be real folk. You want to perform, go to Apollo, Pastor. <laughs> John 7 and 39. John 7 and 39. Shaman, read. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because that Yahawashah was not yet glorified. There it is. There it is. The Holy Spirit wasn't given because Jesus Christ wasn't glorified. How many verses did we just read where the Spirit showed up in the so-called Old Testament? Several, right? So what is this verse talking about the Holy Spirit wasn't given because Christ wasn't glorified? What do y'all notice about this verse? Thank you, Father. They've been listening. Hallelujah. <laughs> we have fun in here. For the Christians who may see that we have fun. But on a serious note, to my Christian family and friends, what we're trying to highlight here, John 7 and 39, the text is saying that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Yah, hadn't been given to the people because Christ wasn't glorified. And what we're bringing out, if you have your hard copy, this verse is in parentheses, which according to the editors and translators, it's been added or altered. Because there's no way we just read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We just read seven verses where the Spirit of Yah was on his people in the Old Testament. So how do you bring me to John 7 and 39 and saying, see, the Spirit didn't come because Christ wasn't glorified. It's Christian dogma. <coughs> it's a philosophy of men. <coughs> Christ didn't come to bring us the Spirit. Christ came to renew the covenant for us. Any comments or questions about that? That's, that's good. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all want me to be reaching here. So the, the, the remaining verses, and this is when I felt guilty that I didn't give y'all enough witnesses. I didn't give enough clear breakdown. So if Abba sees fit, we continue this. But I want to help people see that that phrase, the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit, that's referring to Abba. For all the Christians out there who think there's a third spirit that got you shaking and stuff like that, that's Roman Catholicism. There is no third spirit. There's two that dwells on high for us. The great I am who is the, the greatest and his only begotten son on his right side. There is no third entity for us. So the remainder of this class, I'm going to try to show people how the text, the text has been written or the text has been translated by foreigners. The text has been translated by French, Germans, uh, Greeks. And as Nariah was breaking down Rawak, they don't know how to break down the glyphs. Yeah, they're, they're, they're doctors of theology from Greco-Roman schools. None of the apostles went to these Greco-Roman schools. So for the next 10, 15 minutes, we're going to use scriptures to show the spirit is the most high. The spirit is the most high. He is the highest. There is none higher. First witness is Romans 8 and 11. Romans 8 and 11. Romans 8 and 11. Read. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shai from the dead from the dead dwell in you. All right, let's stop. If the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you. So there was a spirit that raised up Christ from the dead. Christ didn't raise himself from the dead, right? So this writer is saying, if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, Christ is not God. Christ is not God. There was a spirit that raised him from the grave. The spirit that raised him from the grave is the Holy Spirit, is the great I am. It's Abba Yah. He's not Abba Yah because he didn't raise himself. His father raised him. Amen. What are you teaching inside the church? Woo. We don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shai from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ Hamashiach from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So this is very heavy because this letter is written to who? The Romans. Italian Romans? The Yasharala in the Romans. The Hebrews living in Rome. So Paul is writing a letter to Hebrews living in Rome and he says, if the spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you. They was over in Rome, but when in Rome, and our people was doing it to the fullest. Come on. They was doing it to the fullest. We doing it now. Doing it now. Yeah. White boys roll up little doobies. Jamaica's like, the big boy. <laughs> you with the big split mind. Like, we got to do it the best. The little, the little light skinners come out with the swim swimsuits on. Our shoes got to take it to the, we go to Miami. It's like, oh my God. Like, you up here butt naked. You got a you got a tissue on. Our people got to take it to the tenth power. So Paul is right to Romans. No, he's right to Hebrews who were in Rome doing what Rome doing, worshiping Diana, worshiping Jupiter, and he's telling them if the spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, you you out there getting high, but you still got Yah in you. That's why you wasn't content. You know you was wrong. That's why when you ride past the church, you turn that trap music off. Mm. That's why on Sunday when your mom called, you don't answer because I know what she want. The spirit was still in you when you were sinning. Uh, that's right. While you was yet sinners, he died for you. Right. He never left his people. He never left us. Right. Shooting up Haram, mm. bed hopping. He still was with you. He said he would never leave us. There is no trinity. There is no trinity. It says if the spirit that raised up Christ from the dead. It didn't say if the trinity that raised up Christ from the dead. This text talking about the spirit is talking about Abba. It's talking about the most high. Any comments or questions about that? Let's go to Romans 15 and 19. I'm sorry. Passion Passion is, is going to come out like Jeremiah said. This truth is like fire. I don't mean to scare y'all and get y'all all. Oh my God, he's so emotional. Take your time. Take your time. This thing is real for us. We are the people of the book. You ain't got to be moonwalking and putting on all the bonnie three thousand dollar suits. You got on all these red bottoms. You going to hell with your red bottoms on. Your church all fancy with all kind of lights and and all kind of monitors. You going to hell with the monitors. You got to put on airs for your father. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, then I hear from heaven. All this extra mess y'all putting on. Well, you know you ain't paid tithes in two weeks. What that got? I'm hurting. My baby need formula. Well, you still can pay tithes. How past the baby need formula? <laughs> Madness. <laughs> If you give on to the Lord, he will give you more to give. That's all they want to talk about. Giving, giving, giving. I saw, um, I thought about you because you said you was watching um, Copeland one day. or Yeah, uh, yeah it was Copeland. He got a, a, a Bentley or something like that from the people. I seen a, a news article that said he got a, a Bentley. From the pe his, his people end up paying for it. He think it's God. He's bragging like this. news, like newly. Yeah, newly. This is God blessing him. Didn't you read in there? Did, didn't you read in Deuteronomy? The Lord told him this. The Lord told him, Kenneth Copeland, didn't you read in Deuteronomy 28 that you should be blessed when you come and blessed when you go? Well, can you show me where your wife was raped in front of you? Copeland, can you show me where your sons were so, so, sold off as slaves? It says, uh, Kenneth Copeland praises God for Bentley with Bretland clock as sea offering from a dying man. So some dying man, you know, gave him an offering that he used to buy a Bentley. You could feed about 1,500 families with a Bentley's uh, going forward. 
I seen a YouTube video one time where they said this dying lady was sending her letters and all her money out of her savings account because she had cancer or something like that. And the, the people that exposed the church, it's one of the popular ones. It might have been Copeland, I'm not 100% sure. But the person that was exposing the church said he didn't even read them. It was Copeland, I seen that thing. Yeah. I seen that thing. He was stuttering. Um, Romans 15 and 19. To get us back on track, we're bringing out that there is no trinity, there is no three in one, there is no triune, there is no oneness. The spirit that this book talks about is talking about your father, the great I am, the most high. We call him the most high because that means he's the most high. We just watched the Olympics. Was it two people getting first? Nah, you staying down there. I'm first. There, he's the most high. There is them beside him. Romans 15 and 19. Oh, I'm trying to take my own thing. Shema. Shema. Better get y'all out of here. Romans 15 and 19. Shema. Shema. Read. Romans chapter 15 and verse 19. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of Yahweh, so that from Yerushalayim and round about Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Hamashiach. How did he do that? <coughs> by the power of the Spirit of Yahweh, of God. So we're just pointing out once again, the text is saying by the Spirit and power. And every time this text, the writers say by the spirit and the power, it's not this third entity that the Roman Catholic Church created. It's the most high. He is the spirit. It's by his spirit we all are moving. His spirit we all are still alive. His spirit causes everything. There is, there is no three in one. When his son comes, his son is in his place, but the son don't become the father when he's on earth. What's this that made? No, he told, I have come in my father's name. That means I'm in my father's place, but I'm not my father. And you notice how he don't say, I come by the spirit of Jesus. Come on now. He, he, he says Christ like in a different point. So it's obviously like when you read it, he's making a difference between the two. Come on now. It's just two plus two is four, except in church. The next witness is 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. I have to get this image ready. Shema, will you have it? Shema. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10. For Yahweh have revealed them unto us by his spirit. By his what? By his spirit. Yahweh, the Lord or God, the, the papers would say, has revealed it to us by his spirit. Now, it's not a third entity. It's by his spirit, the great I am. Reading comprehension is very essential to understand this text. It's not by his spirit. His spirit is a third entity. No, by his own spirit. He's done this. Read on. For the spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of Yahweh. So what? the spirit searches all things, the deep things of Yahweh. The text can't represent Hebrew thought. So this is going to be an instance where you see the spirit is searching the deep things of Yahweh. It's still his own spirit. That's right. It's still his own spirit. Because the spirit of man knows the things pertaining to the man, but the spirit of Yah understands the things pertaining to Yah. Reading comprehension is fundamental. Christians twisting things. See, no, right here, the Spirit expresses things of God. It's His Spirit expressing the things of Him. Am I making? Am I stretching this? Am I twisting this text? No, no, no. Because I, you know, I talked about this um, um, many times as well. I try to describe it like uh, He's that one source, but He gives out that power. Um, where he sees fit 
and I use the Isaiah how, you know, and one of the verses you we read earlier, he said the same thing, but he'll give you the spirit of understanding when you need it. He'll give you the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, might, power, whatever it is you need, he'll give it to you, but it's still his spirit. Come on now. So I mean, I'm right in line with this thought process. All praise for most eye, uh, giving us eyes to, to see. Um, try not to be too kind of sending all these people because most eyes have blessed them that. They're, they're still captivated with lights, camera, action, and the pastor moon walking. And, oh, look at his, his sweat rag matches his tie. What they got to do? With, what they got to do with, with his pastor? His sweat rag matches his tie. Like he coordinated. Uh, the next one we're going to is 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. Shaman? Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of Adonai Yahweh Shai and by the spirit of Yahweh. Read that again. And ye and such some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of Adonai Yahweh. You are justified. You've been washed by the blood of Messiah. You are justified because of Messiah. Not because you're smart and you went to college. You're justified because of what Messiah did on the cross. And by what? And by the spirit of Yahweh, our Allah. You're justified by Christ. Come on. And then by our spirit. Spirit. Our that's, God. That's two. Um, that, that's two. By the spirit of our God. Well, ain't you short? It's dose. It's just dose. Yeah. We're justified because of Messiah bringing his body for us. And it was by the spirit that he was able to take that. There is no trinity. When this book talks about the spirit, it's told about your father. It's don't, there's no trinity in our, our, our nation. Any comments or questions about that? Uh, would it would it be safe to say that the Messiah wouldn't have been able to endure that being hung on the tree had it not been for the Spirit? Um, he just as we as we said. Because everyone else who did that, who had to take that torture, what happened to them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They died. They didn't come back. Messiah ate the cross. He ate the cross, and I'm back. I'm back. So it was by the, his Father's Spirit he did that. He couldn't do it. This flesh, this flesh can't take that torture stick. The most gruesome movie that depicts it, even though it had the, the stuff wrong, was Mel Gibson. Y'all want to go see that movie, The Passion? That movie had me crying. Like, dang, like, you see that that, that cat of nails ripping that flesh open? That that's a they they got they got this whip with nails in it. And as he's hitting you, the nails go into your flesh and pull your flesh out. That movie was gory. And even though I knew it wasn't, they had the you know shades wrong. It still had me bored because like man, like, that was real. And you know that you know they probably more wicked in real life. You know they right. make people wicked. Right? They couldn't put it all on camera. Yeah, some of the stuff we read in the Maccabees and stuff. So I can only imagine it's real. So. Again, I knew I knew the image wasn't, but it still was like, man, like that was like that was rough. It's real to me. <laughs> so see, so no, right, you're right. I agree with you. He could only take that by the spirit of Yah in him. Man, y'all gotta read the book of um, the book of martyrs. Whatever you're going through, or you crying, whining about your job, or things ain't going right, the book of martyrs will smack you in the face because there's a story about this young girl about 17, 18, and she's a Hebrew. They're calling her a Christian, but she's a Hebrew Israelite, and she won't recant. She won't deny Messiah. So she's in line to get fed to the lions, 
and our people, they can hear the lions, they can see the lions, and our people, some of our people just start praising Yah, start singing and praising. And they said, the man says, when it was the little girl's turn, 17-year-old little girl, she went out there, the, the lion tore through her, ripped her up, but he didn't kill her, so the executioner kicked, brought her back to the group, and she turned, she said, when are they going to bring the lions out? Oh, uh, hmm. <laughs> The Most High took her out of it. She didn't know she was being mauled by a lion because the Most High took her. You ain't going to even. The mother looking at her like, child, look at yourself. Your ligaments are showing. This is what We ain't going to bring the lions out. That's the power of God. We don't have to fear nothing. I'm not fearing nothing with y'all God. 1 Corinthians 12 and 3. And I'll run this down to uh, 12, 3 through 13, if you don't mind. I've got to find this image. Fox book, a book of martyrs is available online, too, for PDF. You don't have to buy it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And you said 2 through 13? 3 through 13. 13. We'll just start at the top. You're kind of glad. Uh, verse 1, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of Allah, Yahweh, calleth Yahweh Shai a curse. And that no man can say that Yahweh Shai is Adonai, master, but by the Holy Spirit. So this is when we got to break it down. He says, no man speaking by the spirit of Yah would call Yahweh Shai cursed. You can't, you can't say the spirit is on you and you're saying Messiah came to do away with the law. That's, that's oil and water. If you're saying Messiah came to do away with the law, the spirit of Yah is not saying that. That's Satan saying that. Then read, read that verse again. It, it, again, I'm pointing out, he's only mentioning two, not three. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God, Allahim, Yahweh, calleth Yahweh Shai a curse, and that no man can say that Yahweh Shai is master Adonai, but by the Holy Spirit. The Holy, you can't even say that he's our king. You can't say that the Son is our king unless the Most High Spirit reveals that to you. <laughs> That's why the Pharisees couldn't catch it. The Most High wasn't with you. You couldn't receive him as your king because Abba didn't open your eyes. Again, it's Abba the great I am, but it's two. Abba and then his son. Elder? That's, that's that text, man. John 6, 44. No man can come to Mashiach unless the Father draws him. So again, no man he's the, he's the word made flesh. So no man, can, no man can come to him unless the Father draws him. No man can understand What's being said, unless the Father draws him. So no man can see no man can see him unless the Father draws him. And that's what the book said. Again, that's one of the verses that relieves us. You can you can pull out scripts and precepts. You can have your little precept packet in your phone all you want. If I ain't on with them, they're not going to see what you're showing them. They're not going to see why it's important to know who the Israelites are. They're not going to see why it's important to keep the law. They're not going to see why we keep the feast days. The Most High is not. That's why you count yourself special. Not cocky and arrogantly, but count yourself special that you understand this stuff. Any other comments or questions about that? You want me to keep reading now? Yeah, come. Verse 4. Now these, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. The what? But the same spirit. There's many gifts. Some have the gift to cook, some have the gift to sing, some have the gift to read, some have the gift to write. There's many different gifts, but they come from what? The same spirit. Same spirits. Same spirit. Spirits? Spirit. No Singular. No S, right? Spirits. We, we, we may not have degrees, but we paid attention in grade school, right? There's no S on the word, right? Spirit. Many different gifts, one spirit. Where's three and one at? One spirit, not three and one. 
and so there I, are differences of administrations, but the same master. Same masters. Same master. I Di and I. Different administrations, different way you do things, but one master. One master, not two, not three, not three and one. There's one master. Read on. And there are diversities or differences of operations, but it is the same power which worketh all in all. But the, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of languages, to another, the interpretation of languages. So right there, this is where they get speaking in tongues, the gift of languages. But it wasn't talking about some gibberish, Hika Mohana spitting all over, over your neighbor. It was talking about because we were scattered to the four winds, I can understand my brother who's speaking Latin now. The most high gonna, we, we, the Tower of Babel was a, mac, a, a microcosm of us. The Tower of Babel was us. We're scattered to the four winds around Babylon speaking different languages, but when the power of Yah come, we can understand each other. It happened in the day of Pentecost. That wasn't no Hikamu Honda they was talking. He says, how do we hear everybody in our language? They heard those brothers coming from Europe speaking Paleo-Hebrew. It was the most high giving a foreshadow. I'm going to bring my people back from the four corners and they're all going to have one tongue. Right. Zephaniah 3 and 8. They should all call upon me with one tongue. We're not going to be using these Babylonian terms, God and Lord and, 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 and Yahoo and all. No, we're all going to be saying Yahweh Barakatha. Read on. Tongue. And verse 11 is just like what I was describing a few minutes ago. But all these worketh that one in the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So if he feel if you need something, that same spirit is gonna give it to you. Absolutely. Um, comment. Uh, somebody, uh, uh, verse twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 12, for as the body is one and have many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, also is Hamashiach, Christ. 13, for by one spirit are, are we all baptized in one body, uh, into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been made all to drink into one spirit. We've been made to drink into one spirit, not three, not three and one, not oneness, not uh, triune. We've been made to drink into one spirit. Was that verse 13? Time. So this whole chapter is uh, my witness that there is no Trinity. When the text speak of the Holy Spirit, the church call it the Holy Ghost, it is no third entity, it's the most high. He's orchestrating everything. He sent his son to be our sacrifice. His son overcame by his father's spirit. Oh, man, I'm gonna get y'all out of here. Last precept is Ephesians 4 and 5. Ephesians 4 and 5. I can't find the image, so we're gonna go without it. I don't have enough for everybody. I apologize. Um, Tennis fluctuate throughout the week, so it is what it is. Ephesians 4, verses 5 through 6. Because now I'm going to finish with, before we read that, 
let me preface this with we've been being taught by Greco-Roman pastors and they're reading the text and the text is saying laying on the hands laying on the hands there's many uh, passages in the New Testament I don't want to pull them all but you'll read the pagan term or the English phrase by the laying on hands uh, I think Acts 3 and 18 somewhere in Acts 3 it says when the wicked Simon saw that by the laying of, of hands Peter then was doing these things he asked for that power so the text has been translated by pagans and they got a phrase in, inside, the, inside the so called New Testament by the laying on of hands and that's why these charismatic preachers and now some even, even Hebrew Israelites want to lay hands on people anybody need prayer anybody got sickness come up here to lay hands on you and pray for you and I, I don't mean to throw off kind of sin and all that stuff I think the most high for this eyes to see the phrase laying of hands is pagan the phrase laying of hands is a pagan trying to express Hebrew thought laying of hands is not physically touching people let's read Ephesians 4 verses 5 through 6 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 5 one Lord or master one faith one baptism one power and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all so that's where I got my first tattoo from I misquoted is Ephesians 4 there's one faith one baptism there's no Trinity there's no Trinity. There's one faith, one baptism. I'll read that one more time. Um, verse 5. One master, Adonai, one faith, Amanah, one baptism, one Alahayim, and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. So again, this is a, 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 just a a nail in the coffin, put putting a pin in it, as they say. There is no trinity. There's one baptism. There's one faith. The Most High is doing everything, and He's choosing who and when. And these people that is in our history being used of y'all, they wasn't special. They wasn't running around Hikomohando. They just was living as holy and set apart as they could. And the Most High used them mightily. But it's the Most High doing all these things. Um, any comments or questions about that? So to bring this to a close, I want to address the land of her hands. And there's many verses that says it. Just for one witness, let's go to Hebrews 6 and 22, I think. Just to give you one witness. But you guys can use the tools out there. There's many verses inside the New Testament to talk about laying of hands, laying on hands. Hebrews 6 and 22. No? I'm sorry, Hebrews 6 and 2. The slide key, Hebrews 6 and 2. I bless you below. <laughs> Hebrews 6 and 2. Shaman? Read of the doctrine of baptisms and of the laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. So this is one instance you see the phrase laying on of hands. And this is where these pastors and some, some of these Hebrew Israelites now, mores, whatever you want to call yourself, apostles, have at it, bishop, have at it. They think they have power. And they think that part of the walk, part of your, your job is to lay hands on people and so God can use you to heal these people. And it's false doctrine. It's vanity. If we're all lawful, spirits can run out of here. Lion spirits, backbite spirits, gluttony spirits, whoring spirits. If we're doing what we're supposed to do and we repent, these spirits shouldn't be around shouldn't be standing around us. 
I gave you a second handout. I, was, I can't find the image. I was going to try to do a dig digital image for those on uh, Facebook. The phrase laying of the hands is a Greek phrase, or English phrase comes from the Greek. The word hand, the word hand there in that phrase, laying of hands, it comes from the Greek word kyer. Greek word kyer. And it's Strong's G5495. Everyone see that in that second handout? Everyone see it in that second handout? Laying of hands. Laying of hands. It's made up, that phrase, that, that English translation comes from two Greek words. And the second Greek word for hand is kyer. Kyer. Uh, can you read some of the definitions how kyer is used in the Bible? Biblical, outline of biblical usage. By the help or agency of anyone, by means of anyone, applied to God, symbol, symbolizing his might, activity, or power in creating the universe or in upholding and preserving. God is present in protecting and aiding one, uh, in punishing or in determining and controlling the destinies of men. That phrase, laying of hands, that appears in the New Testament like 10, 15 times, the word hand in the Greek is kyer. Kyer. Every one of y'all, how many of y'all got the hand out? I know we fell short. How many of y'all got the hand out? Those of you who have the handout, what do you know or know is missing from those biblical usages? Y'all both say the same thing. Read those biblical uses for Kyer again. The English used the word hand. The Greek, the Greek text had a word called Kyer. And the English, the best word they can use is hand. So read those uses again for Kyer. So outline of biblical uses one is by the help or agency of anyone, by means of anyone. Figure two, they have fig. I'm going to take a guess, is that figure of speech. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gives you a clue. So it's saying uh, second biblical usage is a figure of speech applied to God symbolizing his might. A figure of speech applied to God symbolizing his might, activity, or power, or basically a figure of speech for how God works in creating the universe or upholding and preserving, in punishing or in determining and controlling the destinies of men. One more time, what do y'all notice is missing from those usages? Touching somebody. Physical laying on of hands. The appendage hand is never mentioned. The actual appendage hand is never mentioned. Did y'all catch that? The word kyer, the English people says we're going to use hand, but biblical usage is, is never used for your physical hand. So when our elders was using that Greek word, and, and y'all want to use laying of hands, they wasn't laying and put, pushing people's head back, let it go, let it go, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. That's good. Well, the Father helping the people. Yeah. Well, witness to what you're saying, my mom, is... Uh, in one of the, the outlines of biblical usage, number three says, in punishing. I can't uh, remember the precept off the top of my head, but what, where is it at where it says, and the Lord's hand was not drawn back still? That's talking about um, punishing us for our disobedience. Right. Again. His hand was not drawn back still. So does that mean Yah came down here with a hand and physically whooped us as a nation? No. If we say give this man a hand, what are we saying? Help Go help him out. This text is written for us by us. You go to Moody Cemetery, get your degrees. You don't know what you're teaching or preaching. Now you want to have an altar call. Everybody line up on the left and right side of the church. We're gonna get. We're gonna set some people free here. We're gonna lay hands on you. If anybody want to give for tongues? Who wants to give for tongues? Come on, let me lay hands on you. Give you a gift of tongues. Hold on, my Rob. Yep. You had something, Queen. No, I was just going to mention that um, it doesn't also speak about transferring anything from one human being to another human being. Okay, talk to him. At all. At all. 
when we lay hands on someone in the Hebrew sense, we're praying for you so the Abba can move for you. Elder? And that's, that's pretty much the definition here is an instrument of someone, or some, an instrument used to accomplish the purpose. If you go to the bottom there of your handout, those who have it, at the bottom, it gives you a, uh, a clear definition of Kyer, and that's what Elder just read. That phrase, laying of hands, don't mean physically pushing somebody's head back with some olive oil on it so they push back and knock them on the floor. You don't understand this text because it's for Israelites. It's for Shemitic people. And all praise the Most High for opening our eyes up. So everything they've been learning in church, pushing people's heads back, dancing, shouting, foaming at the mouth, it's all vanity. It's the works. You have a demon on you. A demon got you talking like that. Because even if even if what y'all was doing was correct, by the text that you got, it says if one do speak in an unknown tongue, let there be interpreter. an interpreter. How many times have y'all heard them preaching, he the 100, and just keep going? Wait a minute. According to the text, that tongue was for the edification of the people. I don't know what you just said. You're not even doing it by how the text say to do it. It's demons inside your church. Christianity is full of demons. Let's finish with, I'm just going to get this out of the way and, and we'll be done with it. Because they think that dancing, they think dancing and shouting, they're imitating David, King David. Let's go to 2 Samuel where, where King David brought the ark back in. We'll close out. Uh, I can't remember offhand. 2 Samuel, is it 10? Somebody look that up so we can get, get it out of the way. I want to point out, they think they're imitating, because uh, I talked to a brother, and I was talking to him in love, and I'm like, you know, I just, like, I got to love you from a distance, because things y'all are doing, it's just not, it's not culture, it's not in the Bible. And his response was, well, I just think people should have the freedom to worship as they choose to worship. And it's like, it sounds good on paper, but when, when we can prove that worship is coming from Satan, I don't want to know where around me. So when you dancing and dancing in the corner and got the towel out and the sheets out, that's Satan. That's Satan. Got, but in their minds, they're going to quote when David brought the temple back. Let's read when David, David brought the temple back. What is this? First Samuel 10, is it? 2 Samuel, Samuel 6. Samuel 6. Samuel Let's read when David brought the temple back to show that when David broke out in, in the joy, let's just read it first. 2 Samuel 6, and where you started at? So David would not remove the ark him, but David carried aside of that Edom. That, um, we don't have that part. Let's, let's start at 12. Okay, yeah. Start at 12. This is 2 Samuel 6 and 12. I'm trying to help the Christians see that when y'all break out in that dancing, that praise break, you have demons on you. You have demons inside you. And it's the music, which Satan is the, was the king of the music, wasn't he? Satan was the head worshiper, wasn't he? That's how he lured Noah's grandson off the mountain with music. So that music coming from Satan got you dancing. Because without that music, or soon that music stopped, you stop. Ain't that funny? So the power left you when I stopped playing that key? It's Satan in y'all. Let's read out. First, second Samuel 6 and verse 12. And it was told to King Dawah, saying, Yahweh have blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertaineth unto him because of the ark of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So Dawah went and brought up the ark of Yahweh from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of Dawah with gladness. Just so if any of these brothers out there listening, 2 Samuel 6 and 12, the great I am most high just blessed the Edomite. Did y'all catch that? He just blessed the house of an Edomite. So it's not up to you who goes and stays. You, you are no, you might not even make it, King Judah. You might not even make it. The Most High just blessed this Edomite as the ark was in his house. Read on, Bob. And it was so that when they that bear the ark of Yahweh had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. Uh -huh. And David danced before Yahweh with all his might, and David, the wide, was girded with a linen ephod. Wait a minute, you missed something. Uh, David was in the spirit and started shouting. 
And Dawad danced before Yahweh with all his might. With all his might? With all his might. With all his might? With all his might. It wasn't no spiritual trance. It wasn't no spiritual trance that went over David. You have to know your history. David had been on the run from his own mentor. His own big homie wanted to kill him for jealousy. The nation turned their backs on David. No, David, I'm riding with Saul. We had, David had just seen a man trying to catch the ark, and this man was killed. Now the Most High sends word to David that the Most High has blessed this Edomite since the ark was in his house. David said, let's, let's bring it home now. Maybe the Most High is with us. So as the ark is coming, and the Most High ain't killing nobody, David is sacrificing, and he starts dancing with all his might. It was his flesh. It wasn't no spiritual A flat. Dude, dude, I'm happy. Y'all been watching the Olympics? What's been happening when they cross that finish line? The brothers is like, ah, I'm him. That's what David is doing. The Most High is with me. Championship time, that's all he's doing. He's not in no spiritual tree. No. The Most High has delivered us. He, the ark is back in Jerusalem. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. That's all he, he, he got a tunic on, and the, the tunic he got on is one of the ones we wrap around. So as he's jumping, his tunic's coming unwrapped. But he's dancing with all his might, not God on him. So y'all think y'all imitating David. David was just overjoyed. You got to know what I've been through. You can't tell it. Let me tell it. Heathens. Heathens. You don't know like I know. You don't know like I know. That's what David said. Y'all don't know what I've been through. I've been in caves crying. I've been in caves praying. I was on your man. Where you at? If I'm the God, where you at? You don't know what he's been through. He ain't on some spiritual trance. I'm happy. I was with us again. All that feminist stuff y'all doing, tight behind pants on. Hit that organ. <laughs> David ain't in no trance. He's happy. He's feel. He's physically happy. It's not no spirit. So y'all ain't doing what David did. Y'all got demons in y'all. Any comments or questions? Y'all may get this later. I'm trying to drive home the point. The things you picked up in churches, we don't need it here. That's right. That's right. We don't need it here. That's right. You don't have to change your voice. You don't have to turn your mic down. You don't have to have a matching sweat rag with your suit. That's right. You don't have to go to Bible study 10 weeks. Anybody, you ain't spoken tongues yet. Samuel was like 10 years old, the most high called Samuel. Samuel had spoken tongues. Masha had a speech impediment. He never spoke in tongues. Everything they're teaching in church is from Satan. We don't need it here. We don't need it as the holy people. Keep your temple pure and the power of Yah is going to manifest in your life. With that, I close. Any comments or questions about today's class? All praise to the great I am, the water for your patience, uh, the water for helping with the reading. You know, all hearts of uh, elder. I, I got, you know, you know, we said last week, um, say it this week as well. Like when we started out, especially with, you know, the, the, the power of the most high is with us. It has been with us. I'll keep I'm telling you everything that you said, we would we would talk, Marsha and I were talking about verbatim, like verbatim this morning. That's how our spirit is working. I mean, verbatim, every single thing that you said, oh, praise. we were talking about. Praise, man. You know what I mean? Verbatim. So the spirit is moving to, to let our people know um, that, you know, because I was basically saying, you know, I, I, I hear, you know, people even now, oh, I don't see, I don't see, you know, the power is not here. I don't see this happening. I don't see healers and I don't see, no, the power has been here, man. For like the fact that you're understanding this, the fact that you ain't blow your brains out because they, you know, everything's not going right in your life. You know what I mean? There's people I've seen our people, you know, um, you know, receiving, you know, the, the heritage and getting back to the heritage heritage and you know, just loving the covenant and you know, coming out of, you know, gay and lesbianism and doing all these things. You wanna tell me the power of the most high is not with us? Come on now. 
Come on. So I mean, this 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 has been beautiful, man. You know, and just see how the Most High is just moving in this. We need laborers, and we don't we don't need pretty boys and pretty girls. We need people who gonna roll their sleeves up. Sometimes you may have to give a fiend a hug, and they, they ain't had a bath in months. That hug keeps them from killing themselves. That hug may keep them from going back in high. You may have to witness to an alcoholic with, with breath. Smell like not at night train. We need laborers in this thing. Last two things. I don't want to shortchange the most high. Uh, let's go to Psalms 107 and 20. Psalms 107 and 20. Elder, get uh, 143 and 5 so we can make it quick. If you don't mind, Elder. 107, Psalms 107 and 20, and then 143 and 5. Just to, to just a greater witness of, of what we're trying to bring it out. Psalms 120, uh, sorry, Psalms 107 and 20. Shema. Shema. Psalms 107 and 20. Read. Psalms 107 and 20. He sent Yahweh Shai and healed them. Did y'all catch that? Did y'all catch that? Hmm. What y'all text say? Word. He sent his word, and his word is who? Yahweh Shai. That's all we need. You confess your Habashai by his blood, and his word is his word is healing us. Anxiety is gone. Fear is gone. The word is doing. That's why you gotta rehearse this word. Your bad days, put the scriptures on. And you I guarantee you, if 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 none of the songs get you out your mood, by the time you get to the prophecies of Isaiah, us being restored, man, whatever you had you down is gone. This word's gonna heal us. Not nobody laying hands on you. The word, the word will heal you. Any comments or questions about that? I finish that up, Ma. Okay. He sent his word, Yahushua, and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. This word is going to deliver us from this captivity. Trusting in the promises is going to deliver us. When they out there trying to find the next ATM, all the ATMs are gone. Me and my wife in the house cooling. You could have them cash you no, know, they go they worthless. Worthless. Last one is 143 and 5. Psalm, 143 and 5. Psalm 143 and 5. This is out of ESV. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the work of your hands. That's what we were supposed to do. Ponder the works of his hands. We were supposed to tell the generation after generations the great I am has all what we need. We just, we, every generation is supposed to know he brought us from Egypt, he killed these people for us, he killed these people. But why? Because he chose us and all we got to do is keep the law. This thing ain't no where you got to get a degree, go in debt, and, go to, and then go to Jake's Women Down or Loose Conference. No. The Most High's Word healed us and remembering his hand is going to get us through these days we got coming. With that, I yield. Thank you for your time and patience. If all hearts and minds are clear, let's stand and face Jerusalem.